we uh, move on to the uh, study of uh, uh, the book of Revelation, I would request uh, dear Jacob to, um, to summarize the previous portion now. Then after that, we'll be uh, studying from uh, chapter 13. Yeah. Yes, Jacob. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Friday. So it's been a couple of weeks since we last uh, did one of these, but um, I believe we left off on the war in heaven. Uh, some examples for Satan's access to heaven. It happened through Job, high priest Joshua, Daniel, and Simon Peter, which happened in Luke. And then we talked about Satan, the god of this world, the prince of power of the air, the forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, and about the heavenly war in the air. And um, we went over different names of Satan that he goes by in the Bible. He goes by as Lucifer. That's Latin for star and shining. He's the son of the morning, son of the dawn, son of the rising sun, the old serpent. He's cunning. He's deceiving. He's the great fiery red dragon, blood shedding and murderer. He's the devil, the demon, destroyer. He's the ruler of this world. He's the god of this age. Um, he's the prince of power of the air. He's the spirit of disobedience. He's the liar and the father of lies. He's the evil one. He's Belial. He's believable. And that also that means the prince of evil spirits. He's the enemy. He's the murderer. He's a deceiver, accuser, persecutor. And then in Latin, he's Abaddon and Apollon, which means destroyer. And then we looked at um, some verses regarding Satan's strategy of persecuting God's people. Uh, those verses were Revelations 12, 12, Exodus 19:4, Deuteronomy 32, 11 to 12. Isaiah 40, 31. And then the last thing we left off on was um, the continu continuation of Satan's persecution. Um, he's water like a river and flood, miracle of God, victory by blood of the lamb and testimony and reward of believers, which is in 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Very good. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jacob, for uh, that summarization. And uh, um, so I would request uh, everyone to uh keep up on your bible you know if you have a bible or device or something you can you can just open the bible and uh, uh look into that portions that uh, when we are uh, when i am just i'm discussing something from that chapters you know that would be easy for you to understand all uh, the the points you know otherwise uh, you'll be just uh, uh, looking into it and uh, you will not be getting anything at the same time if you are able to uh, write down those things and the points and everything that will be good for you even in the in the upcoming days also you will uh, be able to uh, study more things okay now you know as jacob uh, uh, reminded us about the previous portions uh, in the last class uh, we studied from chapter 12 chapter 12 of book of revelation about the about the war in heaven and also the war on earth and also we studied uh, about the different names of satan in bible and Satan's treachery strategy of persecuting God's people. And at last we saw the privileges of believers. Okay. So we have to know something that, you know, when, uh, 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 when we study from the chapter 12, we have to understand one thing. There is a war in heaven and also there is a war in earth. At the same time, uh, the main person who is uh, fighting with the people of God is Satan. So that is very clearly written in chapter 12. And there are many strategies of Satan and Satan is trying to persecute the people of God. And even though Satan is persecuting the people of God, we have a privilege as, as a believer, we have a privilege, amen? So already we learned about Satan is always persecuting the children of God and accusing the saints and the believers, amen? Because uh, we know that Satan himself is an accuser and uh, it's his job to accuse and make some unnecessary allegations and uh, uh, pointing out the spots and wrinkles of ministers and believers. But our privilege is the victory belongs to us through the blood of Jesus Christ, the lamb, and by our testimony. Okay, uh, you know, because we have a heavenly advocate. That was the, that was the last portion that we were discussing. We have an uh, advocate. And um, uh, he is an heavenly advocate, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is there to intercede for his children in the presence of Father. Okay, That means we are protected by God because it is written, you are the apple of my eyes. Amen. So God says that you are the apple of my eyes and you will be protected 
by God always, even though Satan is persecuting or Satan is trying to defeat the children of God, the church of God. Amen. So now let us uh, go to chapter 13. Chapter 13, uh, we are starting from uh, chapter 13, verses 1 uh, through uh, 18. So 18 verses are there. And uh, in uh, chapter 13 of book of Revelation, you can see uh, the, the, the main heading is vision of the two beasts. Vision of the two beasts. That is from Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 18. Um, he, when you read that the chapter, you will understand that there are mainly two beasts. Okay, The first one is uh, coming out of the sea and the second one is coming out of the earth. Okay, There are two beasts or two animals. And that beast, the first one is coming out of the sea and the second one is coming out of the earth. Okay, now we will go to the uh, uh, the main, the first one, that the beast from the sea, that is chapter 13, verses 1 to uh, one to 10. Yeah, uh, chapter 13, uh, verses 1 to 10. Yeah, Elsa, you can read that portion now. And we will, uh, I mean, while Elsa is reading, I would request everyone to look into your Bibles and you can uh, uh, read uh, with uh, uh, Elsa now. And uh, Elsa is going to read uh, chapter 13, verses 1 to 10. The beast from the sea. Yeah. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with 10 horns and seven heads, with 10 diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its head. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's. Its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to, and to it, the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed. And the whole earth marveled at the, as, as they followed the beast. They worshiped the dragon for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty, blasphemous mouth words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter bla blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to make war on saints and to conquer them. And authority was given given it over every tribe and people and language and nation and all who dwell on earth will worship it everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of of the lamb who was slain if anyone has an ear let him hear if anyone is to be taken captive to captivity he goes if anyone is to be slain with the sword with the sword he must be slain he here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints Okay, so uh, as we read this chapter, we understand the first beast is coming from the sea. The first beast is coming from the sea, and especially it is written in verse one. Okay, so the sea, which always, I mean, uh, symbolizes the Gentile nations in the Bible. The sea always symbolizes the Gentile nations in the Bible. Even when you read uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15 also, you will understand that. Whenever the, in the Bible uh, it is it is mentioned as a sea, that is the meaning of the Gentile nations. Okay, so uh, the description of the beast is mentioned in chapter thirteen, verse uh, one to three. Okay, the description, what, how it is, and how what is the structure and what is the form of that beast. Everything is explained in chapter thirteen, verses one to three. Okay, so. Um, you know, when 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 we, when we go through that, you, you will get uh, the slide also now. You are getting the slide also now about the picture of the first beast. Okay, so you will you will understand what is the meaning of uh, this picture when we are moving through. Because you know, especially there are many things which is written in this particular chapter, especially from uh, uh, verses one to three, the specialities of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, beast. What are those? It says that it is coming out of the sea and it has 10 horns and seven heads. On his horns were 10 diadems and on his heads were blasphemous names. And also 
Uh, it looks like a leopard and his feet were like those of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion, okay? And all these things are the specialities. And also in verse three says that one of his heads as if it had been slain and his fatal wound was healed, okay? So these are the main specialities that we understand from the, uh, from the picture of this uh, I mean, beast. You will understand what is the meaning of that by seeing that picture itself. But I'm not going to explain the details about the 10 horns and the seven heads because uh, that will make more confusion among us uh, if we are going through those portions now. But I will try to give you some, uh, some more explanations about this when we, when we study from chapter 17 because in chapter 17 also, uh, we read uh, about many things about these things like uh, the 10 horns and the seven heads and everything. So we will, we will try to understand what is the meaning of uh, that uh, 10 horns and seven heads on this beast, the first beast, okay? We will study about that maybe later. So here uh, we read that even though this is a beast or animal uh, coming out of the sea, uh, you can see the usage which is used there, he, he in many places in this chapter, he, okay? This is an animal. This is a beast. At the same time, it is written there, he, 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 in many places in this chapter, same chapter. I mean, that shows this animal would be a human. This animal would be a human and he will be a world ruler or a political leader. So this animal, this beast is going to be a world ruler or a political leader. So that could be happening during the time of the great tribulation. We know that Antichrist will begin his career as a peacemaker in the initial time of the seven year great tribulation period. So we know that the great tribulation period, we, now we are studying about the great tribulation. Okay. And uh, during the time of the great tribulation, especially at the initial stage of the initial time of the seven year great tribulation, Antichrist will be uh, beginning his career, his work as a peacemaker. And he will be saying to the people that I'm a peacemaker, I will give you the peace and I will settle everything. And especially to the Jewish people, especially to the uh, people of Israel, the Jewish people, I mean, he will tell them that I'm, I'm going to give you the peace and I, I'm a peacemaker. So that will be happening in the initial stage of the seven year, that means three and a half years, okay? And he will try to uh, settle the Arab Israeli problem by making a covenant with the Jews to, to, to protect them for seven years, okay? When you read Daniel chapter nine, verse 27 also, you will understand that when there is an explanation about when what the, the Antichrist is going to, to do during the time of the great tribulation, okay? We are not going to read that portion, but it, clearly it says that, you know, during those days, Antichrist will try to settle, settle a covenant, okay? That is the, the Arab Israeli problem by making a covenant with the Jews to protect them for seven years, okay? So that will be the entry of the Antichrist. That will be entry of the Antichrist. And he will permit the nation to rebuild the temple, okay? You know, the, the people of Israel, that means the Jewish people, they, they are waiting to rebuild their temple, right? They are waiting to rebuild their temple. And um, uh, Antichrist during those days will help them and give the permission to, to rebuild the temple and he will reinstitute the religious rituals because uh, they already lost the re religious rituals and everything now and they don't have a temple now. So Antichrist will be uh, giving the permission to rebuild the temple and also reinstitute the religious rituals. But in the, in the, in the middle of the seven year, uh, uh, he will break that covenant. First of all, he will make a covenant with the people of Israel. And in the middle of the seven year, uh, that means after three and a half years, he will break that covenant and will stop the ceremonies and set up himself as God in the temple. That means that man will sit inside the temple and he will say that every, everyone should come here and worship me. Okay, so after the three and a half years, I mean, he will stop all the ceremonies inside the temple and he will set up himself as a God 
inside the temple and he will sit there as a, as, as a guard in the temple and everyone will be asked to come there and to worship the Antichrist. But now, you know, you have to understand there are some important lessons in this portion to understand, okay? We are not going to the, uh, going to elaborate a study of uh, this chapter. At the same time, we have many things to understand from some, some of the important lesson to understand from this uh, portion. Okay, when you go to verse three, verse three, there we read that the beast or the antichrist after coming out of the sea will be killed or happen to be point of near death. Okay, it says that I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain. That means died or something. His fatal wound was healed and the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. So verse three, it says that the beast or the Antichrist, after coming out of the sea, he will be killed. Okay, it is assumed that he will be killed in, in, in some other way, or he happened to be a, a, a point of near death, okay? near to the death, but he will be escaped miraculously from the death. The Antichrist will be escaped miraculously from the death. And by seeing that, the people will start to worship him. Okay, this is going to happen. So when the Antichrist is, I mean, coming out of the sea, we can see that, I mean, that Antichrist dies or something is happening to this Antichrist to uh, just like a death or something or some, some kind of uh, uh, damages. And after that, this, uh, uh, this Antichrist will be escaped miraculously from the death. Okay, and the people are watching that by seeing all these things, the people will start to worship him. The people will start to worship him. So here we see there, there are many things which will influence the people to worship Antichrist. Okay, so when the Antichrist is entering and when the Antichrist is ruling over the world, you know, the thing which is going to happen is all the people will try to worship Antichrist because the people will think that this is the real Messiah, especially the people of Israel. The people of Israel, they are always waiting for the Messiah. Messiah, that means, and they, they believe that the Messiah will come and uh, 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 Messiah will re-establish the kingdom for the Israel. So they are waiting for the Messiah. And when the Antichrist comes, they will believe that, okay, this is the Messiah. And they started to worship the Antichrist they started to worship the Antichrist. And there are many things which uh, Antichrist can influence the people to worship him, okay? First of all, first of all, no? Antichrist's power and his sudden rise to international fame and authority, okay? So during those days, the Antichrist will get a power. It is written very clearly there. It will get a power and it is suddenly rising into a position of international fame and authority. That means not only over the Jewish people, but all over the world. The Antichrist will be having the authority and having the fame and having the power over all the world, all the world. That means all over the countries, all over the countries. Okay, so this is the first thing that the people will be influenced to worship and a Christ, okay, because of his power, because of his fame and his authority. And when you read verse three, mm. verse three, there you can understand he is miraculously raised from the death. Okay, he is miraculously raised from the death. That means, you no, know, when he is raised from the death. Okay, the people will be saying, okay, oh, this is God, and he is God, and we have to worship him. So this is the second thing that uh, Antichrist can um, influence the people to worship him. And thirdly, thirdly, when you read verses five and six, it says that his words will control and influence the people. Okay, his words can control and influence the people. That much is the power of his word when he is going to rule over the world. Okay, so remember sometimes, we think that Antichrist is going to oppose Jesus, right? Okay, when you, when, you, when you hear that word Antichrist, Antichrist or something, 
we we think that okay antichrist is going to oppose always jesus okay so jesus is always opposite to i mean uh, antichrist and uh, when antichrist is coming antichrist is going to oppose and fight against jesus and uh, doing something against jesus and god but actually it is mentioned here very clearly that he is trying to imitate jesus in many ways okay antichrist is not trying to all of a sudden trying to oppose jesus or oppose uh, uh, the people of god eh? but he is trying to imitate jesus okay this is a strategy of satan trying to imitate jesus and doing everything as jesus did okay in 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 different ways so that when he do that when he try to imitate jesus and his works okay uh that time people will accept antichrist as jesus okay the people will already accept jesus uh, sorry antichrist as a, uh, as jesus so he will try to prove that he also has the power to perform the miracles he will prove that he will prove that antichrist during the time of the great tribulation he will prove that he also has the power to perform the miracles to come out of the death and has the power to raise the dead just like jesus christ this is very important to understand he also will say i have the power to perform the miracles and the christ will say i have the power to perform the miracles and i have the authority and i have the power to come out from the death i already came out of, out from the death he will say and i has i have the power to raise the dead just like jesus christ so you know from this portion we have to remember one thing that satan also can do miracles okay satan also can do miracles jesus can do miracles okay and the people of god the servant servants of god the ministers of god the believers those who are believing in jesus christ can also do the miracles at the same time satan also can do miracles that it is very clear from the bible that there are many evil spirits that they are doing the miracles okay the people those who are following the evil spirit and following satan they also do the miracles so one thing i have to remind you one thing is that you know don't run after the miracles always don't run after the miracles always miracle will happen and uh, i mean the 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 church in the churches also there will be miracle at the same time don't run after always the miracles because when try to understand whether that miracle is happening by the power of god or by the power of satan okay so god can do the miracle satan also can do the miracle okay even not even today but uh, in the great tribulation time also i mean this is going to happen satan will do the same thing that he will do some miracles and people will be following anti christ and uh, uh, people will be saying that okay this is jesus or this is messiah okay so uh, understand one thing that miracle is happening i mean uh, uh, by the power of god at the same time satan also has the power to do some wonder or some kind of miracle even you know satan is always imitating the trinity of god okay when you study uh, uh, the bible especially uh, book of revelation you understand you know god has a trinity god has a trinity father son and the holy spirit right father son and the holy spirit at the same time satan also is imitating the same thing that is uh you know the great uh, the great dragon the antichrist and the false prophet listen you no know, father son and the holy spirit god's trinity and satanic trinity is great dragon antichrist and false prophets okay we will go to verses 5 and 5 and 7 now okay the heading is god gives permission to antichrist god gives permission to antichrist that is uh very clearly written from verses 5 and 7 okay it says this like this there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies and authority to act for 42 months was given to him verse 7 it was also given to him to make war with saints and to overcome them and authority over very tribe and people and tongue a nation was given to him listen so here is the permission of god to antichrist okay what was the permission 
So in these verses, uh, maybe verses 5 and 7, especially it is written, God gives permission to Antichrist to do something. God gives permission to Antichrist to do something. You know, the permission to speak arrogant words, it is written like that. The permission to speak arrogant words and blasphemies and was permitted to act for 42 months. 42 months means three and a half years. Three and a half years. That means the last three and a half years of tribulation. Listen, the last three and a half years of tribulation, the persecution will be severe. The persecution will be severe and the torturing will be severe. You know, many people will be dying. Many people will uh, will uh, uh, have to uh, give their life uh, only because of uh, uh, this uh, Antichrist action. You know, it says that the permission was given to Antichrist to speak arrogant words and also blasphemy for 42 months. That means three and a half years, three and a half years. Okay, so that will be the, the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. So the permission to war against God's people, to permission to war against God's people. This is known as the sovereignty of God. Listen, you know, when God is permitting something to, to do, you know, when God is permitting Antichrist to do something, that makes a sense that God has a sovereign power. God has a sovereign power. That means God also has the authority and control over the Antichrist. God also has the authority and control over the Antichrist. You know, uh, during those days, many people will submit to Antichrist. Okay, when he is controlling the world and when Antichrist is going to um, uh, do something and, and when Antichrist will uh, torture the people at the same time when he influenced the people to worship him, Amen. You know, uh, and worship him, but some will not submit to him. Many people will submit to him, and some will not submit to him, knowing that this is Antichrist and will stand firm in faith. Then those who hold fast faith will be tortured and killed. This is going to happen. You know, there will be many people at the same time. The people, those who are not submitted to the Antichrist, will be tortured severely and some will be killed okay so keep in mind the antichrist or this beast is pictured here as a as a as a counterfeit christ okay what is the meaning of counterfeit christ okay in malayalam it is vyaja vyaja kristu vyaja kristu okay kristu kristu alla pakshe kristu aanu ennu parannukonde pravartikkunna oru vyaktiyana counterfeit christ ennu parayam so this is what we, it is very clearly pictured about the beast. So we are studying about the first beast from chapter 13. And that beast is a beast, a person is a person. And that beast is a human. And that person will be counterfeit Christ. That means, um, you know, he will be acting like Jesus Christ. He will be acting like Jesus Christ. He will not be opposing Jesus. He will not be opposing the worship of Jesus or something. But uh, Antichrist will be uh, a co I mean, counterfeit Christ. That means he will be acting everything like Jesus Christ. Even, you know, nowadays also we know that the majority of the people do not receive the real Christ, right? You know, we have many people around us. But majority of the people, they are not receiving the real Christ, but they receive Antichrist. Okay, you know. There are many people around us, but uh, we have to know that you know, only few people are going to the church and only, 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 only few members will be gathering in a church and worshiping God. At the same time, majority of the people outside, they are enjoying the worldly pleasures. I mean, so think about, you know, even though there are, there are many things to understand, even though there is a real Christ, the majority of the people are not receiving the real Christ but the majority of the people are receiving Antichrist and following Antichrist and obeying Antichrist and whatever the worldly pleasures are there, they are in chewing. You know, they do not believe the truth of the Bible. There are many people, they are not able to believe the truth of the Bible, but they will believe the lies of Satan. 
okay they are not able to believe the truth of the bible they are believing the lies of satan you know even today we have gracious words of salvation today you know we have a salvation today but majority of the people are listening to the blasphemous words of devil that is what we read in this particular verses okay the blasphemous words of devil that means speaking against god you no know? speaking against god and more, majority of the people are saying there is no god the atheist and the those people are saying that there is no god and don't believe in god and you have to believe in science and everything so this is what happening around us at the same time there are even today also there are a small group of people those who are i mean standing firm for christ today and they are always always trying to follow jesus christ and they are always following the word of god in their life so this is a wonderful privilege for every one of us that we got that privilege to receive jesus as a personal savior amen to to believe the truth of the bible i mean to to experience the gracious salvation of jesus christ amen so let us all i mean come it out with the mighty hand of god and say that oh lord we thank you for everything that you have given us a god we, we thank you for the chances that you have given us a god and again you know during the time of the great tribulation during the time of the great tribulation many will not worship the real christ but they will bow down to anti christ okay so first of all we saw the beast from the sea okay and that beast from the sea is doing something that that is what we were just i mean explaining okay that is the anti christ so now let us study about the beast from the earth beast from the earth so that is uh verses 11 to 18 chapter 13 verses 11 to 18 i i i believe that you already read uh, chapter 13 at your home and uh, then it will it will be uh, easy for you to understand okay let us read that uh, portion once again elsa uh, chapter 13 verses 11 to 18 then i saw another beast rising out of the earth it had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed it performs mortal it performs great signs even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people and by the signs that is allowed to work in the presence of the beast it deceives those who dwell on the earth telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to slain also it causes all both and all both small and great both rich and poor both free and slave to be marked on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark that is the name of the beast or the number of its name this calls for wisdom let the one who ha- has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of the man his number is 666 amen so this is very interesting portion actually but uh, we are uh, today we are studying about the the second beast which is coming out of the earth which is coming out of the earth from revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 18 okay remember i i think you remember uh, from chapter 12 uh we can see that john was uh, i mean seeing a great dragon or what is that maha sarpam a great dragon with uh, with the seven heads and 10 horns okay uh, that means uh, with the seven crowns on his heads and that great dragon represents the satan okay in in chapter 12 in chapter 12 we saw that a great dragon is there with the seven heads and with the uh, 10 horns okay and that dragon is representing satan but now in chapter 13 verse 1 john saw a beast or a, a an animal from the sea with 10 horns and seven heads okay and that is like uh, like uh, some of the wild animals it was like uh, the some of the wild animals with the structure of a uh, i mean what is that uh, head like uh, i mean uh, the the structure of a leopard and bear and lion which represents the antichrist okay so this is the the rep- representation of the antichrist 
you know, um, and, you know, let me tell you one thing. If uh, when I'm taking the classes, if you have any doubt or clarification, you can text me and uh, I'll be uh, uh, ready to, and I'm willing to, I mean, uh, give the answer for that. And if, if you have any questions or any, any uh, doubts or something, you can just text me. Then I will try to uh, clarify those questions and doubts in the, in the upcoming class. Okay. Now, listen, in, in chapter 13, verse 1, John is watching a, a, a particular vision about a beast. Okay, and again in in chapter thirteen verse eleven, John saw a beast from the earth. Okay, with two horns like the lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Okay, in that picture you will understand. It is very clear that it has it has two horns. It has two horns. Okay, so that means you know this beast is from the earth. The first one was from from out of the out of the sea and this is out of the earth and it has two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon the first one was not like a lamb but it was just like a leopard or bear or a lion okay but second uh, a beast or second animal is coming out of earth just like a lamb the horns are just like a lamb and also it is speaking as a dragon. Is it, I mean, uh, speaking as a dragon. So listen, so this antichrist is a political leader. Antichrist is a political leader, but the false prophet is a religious leader. Okay, antichrist is a, is a political leader, but the false prophet is a religious leader. Okay? You know, when these two personal, personalities join together, when I mean, definitely there will be destruction. This is a main thing to understand. You know, when these two personalities are joining together, that means the Antichrist and the false prophet or the political leader and the religious leader. It is very clearly understandable that when these two personalities are joining together, definitely there will be a destruction. Okay, the politics and the religion. Politics and the religion. You know, nowadays, you can see many examples all around the world. You know, some of the political leaders, uh, they are making alliance with uh, uh, some religious leaders, right? Uh, the political leaders alliance with religious leaders and they become uh, thick friends and hand in hand, they are working against some other religion, okay? And they are trying to defeat other people or defeat other religions also, or defeat other countries. Now, I, I don't want to mention any of the examples because uh, we know many of those things now, okay? So, you know, the, the political personality, the political leader and the religious leader, they become friends and they work together hand in hand and they make an alliance with uh, some of the religious leaders and the political leaders and they are working hard for getting a one country or one world country or they are trying to defeat some of the other religions. Okay, that is, I mean, quite often happening around us. So remember, politics and religion or politics and spirituality never got together. Okay, the, now the leaders are trying for that at the same time, it, it will not go together. Okay, the politics and the religion or the politics and spirituality never go together. Okay, where there is a politics or where there is an ego in the church, even that could be the beginning of the spiritual desolation of the church, okay? So there should not be any politics or there should not be any egos inside the church because, you know, this is a strategy of Satan. This is a strategy of Satan bringing the politics inside the church, okay? So when there is a spiritual church, when we have to maintain that spiritual church in that way, when the politics are coming in the church and that would be the beginning of the spiritual desolation of that church because when God was placing, when God was establishing the Christian church, when God was looking forward and God was, I mean, always focusing, I mean, the spirituality of the people, the spiritual people, let, let the spiritual people grow in the church. I mean, so most of the time, this is the strategy of Satan, that Satan is trying to, I mean, divide the people. So, so be careful about the politics in the church, which, which never can build the spirituality of the people, but definitely will break the spiritual atmosphere of the church. Okay. So listen, this, this beast has two horns like a lamb, right? In verse, uh, in verse 11, it says that 
this beast has two horns like a lamb who was a, actually in the bible who is the lamb jesus christ is the lamb right jesus christ is the lamb but here satan or antichrist is uh, where is that uh, uh, is trying to imitate jesus imitate jesus and it is coming just like a lamb with the two horns okay so horns in bible horns in the bible represents the royal status or uh, the power or the strength and the greatness of a person okay whenever uh, it is written in bible especially in uh, book of revelation in many places it is written about the horn okay on the head okay so that represents the royal status and the power and the greatness and the strength so remember one thing uh, the the deception the deception uh, is one of the major strategies of satan deception is the major strategy of satan you know in this beast also represents the false prophet okay so this i mean beast is the false prophet um and it is very clearly mentioned in uh, uh, mainly in three references from the book of uh, book of revelation that uh, this beast is representing the false prophet okay very clearly it is written in revelation chapter 16 verse 13 and uh, uh, revelation chapter 19 verse 20 and chapter 20 verse 10 in all these portions we understand you know this uh, uh, second beast in chapter 13 verse 11 through through 18 that beast is the false prophet false prophet okay so as a false prophet satan always try to make false prophecies okay kalla pravachakan aitana ibu namukku kaana sadikkunnu so this false prophet is always making the false prophecies you know even in christendom also today uh the, the spirit of the antichrist is working um uh, in the uh, in the form of a false prophet okay even from the beginning of the mankind which is obviously uh i mean seen throughout the bible okay throughout the bible when you read you can see that um i mean the spirit of the antichrist is working in a, in a form of a false prophet false prophet we know you know how the devil uh, made his false prophecy in the in the garden of eden right in the garden of eden when you read uh, uh, genesis chapter 2 and 3 you will very clearly understand how clever satan was and how the satan was trying to make a false prophecy to the to the uh, to the eve okay it is very clear it is very clearly written about the garden of eden and god said you know when you when you read uh, maybe chapter 2 verse 17 uh, it says like this okay uh, can you read uh, elsa 270 but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 words but the serpent said to the woman you will you will not surely die for god knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil okay what is that what is the um you know the, how the how cleverly i mean uh, satan is working there you know god said to the man the day you eat the forbidden fruit you will die right in chapter 2 verse 17 okay god said to the man that the day when you eat the forbidden fruit you will surely die okay only that much god said but serpent made a false prophecy and saying that saying that you surely will not die you surely will not die for god knows that in the day you eat from it your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil this is very tricky prophecy that devil is making towards the first i mean the the eve okay god only said that the day when you eat the forbidden fruit you will die that's all okay you will die but serpent is making another false prophecy and saying that surely you will not die if you eat the forbidden fruit your eyes will be open and you will become like god and you will be knowing good and evil so very clearly you have to understand from the bible that bible always says that i mean and a christ or satan is always 
working as a false prophet okay falsely prophesying about the future of the people okay to Adam and Eve I mean this false prophet the serpent the devil was saying that okay this is going to happen in the future in in your life so the false prophecy pro false prophecy is one of the strategy of Satan so that is what we understand from here listen you know um, how clever he is to explain I mean the false prophecies and trying to confuse Eve making confusion among the people I mean, making confusion among the among the people of God okay you know this is happening in our in our Christendom also today that's why I said that dear dear children of God always be careful about the spirit of the false prophets okay there are many false prophets in in many churches in many places you know of course there are many true prophets but uh, remember that uh, there are there are some pro and false prophets also in Christendom who make divisions in the churches okay you know when you read Bible, you understand there are many warnings given about the false prophets in Old Testament, New Testament. Okay, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are many warnings okay, about the false prophets. Okay, because you know it is very clearly written in Bible that there will be false prophets. Okay, at the same time, there are some good prophets also, true false prophets also are there. Okay, even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there are many warnings given about the false prophets. Okay, because God was desiring that it should not happen. Nothing should happen to the church and nothing should happen to the people of God, even though there are false prophets. Let them work hard and let them do something, but let the people of God be protected by the presence of God. That is what God was intention, God's intentions. Okay, for example, in the Old Testament, especially Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 2 to 6, okay, there are Moses. That Moses is explaining about the need of recognizing the false prophets. Okay, so always God is, I mean, sending some of the people, maybe the prophets or uh, <clears throat> the judges or <clears throat> some of the, I mean, main leaders to to warn the people, to warn the people, be careful about the false prophecies and false prophets. Okay, be careful about, I mean, something which is happening, I mean, uh, differently. I mean, in, in our churches. Okay, so here in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 2 to 6, Moses is explaining about the need of recognizing the false prophets. And again, in Jeremiah chapter 23, chapter 27, chapter 29, in these three chapters, Prophet Jeremiah is rebuking the false prophets and gives some warning to Israel that you should not go after the false prophets because false prophets are misguiding the people of God. So you should not go after the false prophets. You have to be stand firm in the word of God. You have to stand firm in the word of God. Amen. So Jeremiah is, I mean, uh, rebuking the false prophets and giving the warning to the people of Israel that you should not follow the words of the false prophets. Even in the New Testament also, even in the New Testament also, Jesus and his apostles, okay? You know, Jesus and his apostles many times gives warning against the, against the false prophets, okay? There are many verses and only one verse we will read, okay? There are Matthew chapter 7, 15, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, and chapter 2, verses 2 to 22. And one more verse is there, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. We will read the last one only. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Test the spirit, whether they are not from God or not. Listen very carefully. Now, when God is appointing somebody, and when God is I mean, appointing some ministers, you, know, you have to understand and you have to recognize what is the difference between the prophecies and the false prophecies? The prophets, true prophets and the false prophets. Okay, so this is a dangerous situation for uh, all the Christian churches today, even not only today, even from the time of Jesus, from the time of the uh, foundation of the New Testament church, even there were many false prophets. There were many people, there were many prophets were there misguiding the people of God. Even in the New Testament also, Jesus and his apostles is warning 
I mean, the people of God against the false prophets. Okay, so we must be very careful about the the trick of the false prophets. And now we will, I mean, just think about I mean uh, the characteristics of the false prophets. The characteristics of false prophets. There are mainly nine points. If you are ready to take it down, just take it down and we will uh, we'll move on, okay? The characteristics of false prophets means, you know, um, when, you, when you read Bible, afterwards you can read those verses. We are not going to read those verses now. Uh, after this class, you can read at home. These verses are saying about, I mean, what are the different characteristics of the false prophets, okay? I, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7, uh, it says that intoxicating drink or drunkards, you know, the, the false prophets are drunkards, okay? And in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 13, it says that the false prophets are like wind. The false prophets are like wind. And in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 11, it says that false prophets are profane or wicked people. Jeremiah chapter 4, Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14 says that the false prophets are adulterous or immoral people. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 2 says that prophecy <clears throat> out of their own heart. They are prophesying out of their own heart. That means they are not waiting for the counsel of God. They are not waiting to listen from the word and they are not waiting for the voice of God, but they are prophesying out of their own heart. In Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 4, it says that the false prophets are just like foxes in the desert. Foxes in the desert. And the seventh one in Micah chapter, uh, yeah, in Micah uh, chapter 3.11, Micah chapter 3.11 says that the false prophets are prophesying with a money purpose. That means the covetous people. That means they are having the intention of earning money for prophesying. This is the important thing to understand that there are many false prophets today also. They need only money. You know, they are working. They are prophesying only for money. No other intention, only for money. They are working. And they need to get something and they need to get the fame and they need to get become the, the prominent persons. So that's the reason they are, they are just prophesying anything. I mean, out of their own heart. It is not given from God. Okay. Again, the eighth characteristic is in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 4. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 4, it says that the false prophets are insolent and reckless. False prophets are insolent and reckless. And in and in uh, in Matthew chapter seven verse fifteen, the ninth one, Matthew chapter seven verse fifteen it says that the false prophets are dressed in sheep's clothing, right? Dressed in sheep's clothing. That means they are so crafty. They are so crafty. Let us read that only that verse. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Elsa. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Um, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are rav ravenous wolves. Okay, so you know, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 says that okay, the, the false prophets are always dressed in sheep's clothing. You know, they are just coming like a sheep, but they are false. They are false prophets. Okay, so why I was sharing all these points, you know, the main point is, you know, we should know the deception and strategies of Satan. The deception and strategies of Satan. So, you know, sometimes you know, when the pastor, the guest speaker was speaking, in the previous uh, Sunday, you know, he was saying, you know, you do you do you scared about? Are you scared about Satan or God? Right? Okay. Somebody said, okay, we are scared about God, and somebody said we are scared about 
um, uh, Satan. Okay, whatever it may be, you know, Satan is coming and approaching the people of God in a different way. You know, we are thinking that, okay, Satan is coming in that way or this way. No, it's not like that. Okay, you know, even I was sharing with you that uh, Satan and Antichrist is always trying to imitate Jesus. Imitate Jesus means he is trying to do everything uh, uh, as per the, uh, the action of Jesus Christ. But what Jesus Christ was doing, this Antichrist also is doing that. Okay, imitating. So know one thing that the deception and strategies of Satan is already there. And let us be aware about the false prophets and their false prophecies, okay? So this is what we understand from these portions and uh, I have no time to explain the, the next portion also today, but we will uh, try to uh, close this point here and uh, uh, we will uh, pray together. Uh, now let us all uh, 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 give us with the mighty hand of God. Let us all just I mean, uh, meditate all those portions uh, what we were discussing today. You know, we had to understand one thing that as we are the children of God, I mean, we should not be deceived by the by the power or the fame of Satan. So we must be storm. I mean, and we must be. I mean, uh, following Jesus and following the Word of God. I mean, very strongly. And must be. Uh, we must be very firm in our faith. Okay, that's what God is. I mean, I mean, desiring from uh, all of us. So this evening, let us all. I mean, uh, give us with the mighty hand of God. There are many things which is happening around us, men. But knowing that, I mean, we are protected by God. Every one of you, I mean, close your eyes and 